Hello everybody and welcome to Sin City Living. My name is Jason and I'll be bringing you today's video. Just had a few things I wanted to go over real fast. First, our usual shout out of appreciation to all of our patrons out there. We appreciate all those tips and support. And I uh, hope you guys are enjoying the videos that we put out for you guys exclusively every single week, including the How to Deal Craps instructional set that is ongoing. And uh, if you're curious about it, go ahead and check the description of the video down below. And also I wanted to go over we have uh, we've had a couple of questions about the uh, about this uh, little neon light thing that we've been uh, putting on some of our other uh, some of our other videos. So if anybody's interested in one of these, just shoot us an email at sincitylivinglv at gmail .com. And uh, so I did another test of our live stream, another attempt to do the live stream. So I now know that I have the right equipment, the right camera the right uh, programming, able to get all of that done. Unfortunately, what I did discover is that my computer was not strong enough, was not powerful enough to be able to encode and upload it as an actual live stream. So I'm gonna continue tweaking with that, although it may turn out that I'm just gonna have to wait until I can afford to buy a newer, more powerful computer for that. Uh, so that will be on the list. Um, so. It does look like live streaming may not be as upcoming as I was hoping. It's going to take a little bit of time to generate that up. And uh, otherwise, please make sure you email us with any uh, questions, strategies, anything you would like us to video. We love shooting these videos for you guys. If not, I'm going to go straight into today's video. So for today's video, I'm going to, I have to reshoot this, uh, my editing messed up on the, the last one. Uh, I want to go over shots and jackpots and exactly what does that mean and uh, um, why is it important to dealers at least. It's not so much important to players other than the fact that it can completely stop the game, but it is definitely very, very, very important to dealers. Dealers are always aware and keeping an eye out for shots for shots taken. They call it shots taken or taking a shot. Somebody may take a shot. Um, whereas jackpots are things that more the box is looking for. The box doesn't want to be caught up in a jackpot or the uh, or the, the pit, pit boss or the shift manager, casino manager, whatever. As it, jackpots tend to go up the chain, so they don't want to be caught in a jackpot. Um, so let me just start this with what is a shot? A shot is basically an attempt by a player to cheat. And I don't mean some of the more obvious things such as pass posting, which is where you are adding to your bet. Say you have a $10 bet and the winner eight rolls and while the dealer's not looking, you, you uh, turn that into 15. Maybe you're pretending to pick up your field, place a new field bet or something and you put your hand over it and change it to 15. That's called pass posting where you change your bet after a decision has been made, uh, either making your bet sm smaller in the case of a loss or making it larger in the case of a win. Um, or things like dice sliding, which is cheating, of course. Um, you know, those, those more, more obvious forms of cheating, those things that are technically illegal here in, in Nevada, uh, those are not considered shots. Shots are considered things that the players do to either try and take advantage of newer dealers or a dealer's mistake, um, or just to an obvious uh, or deliberate attempt to to uh, to cheat and what that mean what I mean by that is uh, here's a here's a excellent example player throws this out right throws out into the cum throws throws twelve dollars out and say they do this uh, while everyone's screaming and yelling maybe the dice are already moved so they're ready getting ready to be thrown and say a six rolls so the dealer goes to travel the combat and the player goes, no, that was a $12 six. You know, I said six. They probably didn't say a word, but they threw $12 down there. So it actually would make sense. So this player actually knows that, that we're probably not going to stop the game. And, go, and even if we went back through the cameras, well, the cameras aren't going to tell us what somebody said. So that then it would have to go to the box and then to the pit boss and so on and so forth until somebody makes the decision of we're going to to go ahead and set it up as a six or we're going to go ahead and pay it uh, as we're going to go ahead and pay it as a place bet or we're going to treat it as a combat and this happens a lot in breaking casinos you'll see players put like a twelve dollar don't come especially if they're standing right next to the dealer knowing that 
should a six or an eight roll, they can claim that this was a six or eight and the dealer just didn't hear them or didn't acknowledge them or something along those lines. Otherwise, they're gonna let it travel behind. Now, the other side of this is that more often than not, um, in fact, I would say every single time, I've not yet seen a time where this didn't happen, where someone took a shot, I tried to take a shot, and as a dealer, I was staring right at them when they put that down. I even said come back, and I was staring right at their face, and they said nothing. They did not say a single word. And yet, when they try and make this claim, another player, at least one other player, will go, yeah, he said that. He, he said that was a six. Knowing beyond a shadow of a doubt, 100%, that that is not true, but there, a player, there's always at least one player that's going to lie for the person taking the shot. It has happened every single time without fail. I have never seen a time where every single person at the table kept their mouth shut. It just never happened. So that is taking a shot where they, they are basically lying in order to take advantage of, of the roll of the dice. Now the thing is, more often than not, when it's a lower bet, we're generally going to let it slide because it's not worth stopping the game so that we can go to the next level up from the box and even possibly even their boss to make a decision. Because um, we know that that decision is probably, they're probably going to look at it and go, it's a $12 bet, just go ahead and pay it. Um, we know that that's likely to, to, uh, um, to happen. So more often than not, we're just going to say, oh, okay, so that was a six. Okay, you got it. We're going to set it up and we're going to pay it. However, after that, that player will be known as a shot taker. There will be at least two dealers that will always have an ear cocked for anything that player says. And will always have an eye on them. And every single time chips leave his hand, at least one dealer is going to very loudly, almost borderline yell what that bet is. So the next time they put, they do that. There's going to be at least one, if not two dealers, and possibly a box that all yell out at the top of their lungs, $12 come bet. That's a bet. Right? We also see it for center action, center action stuff where people will throw in a chip and then they will claim that it was something else, despite the fact that the dealer actually verbally booked the bet and they did not disagree. Now, a lot of times in that case, if the dealer actually booked the bet loud enough for another dealer or the box to hear it, and then the player, after the dice roll, tries to claim that it's something else, then very, very, very rarely is it going to actually be set up to the way they claim because enough people will have heard them that, that the answer will be, they booked this, you did not correct them, so that is what you had as a bet. If you throw in a chip and you mumble something and only that dealer could hear you because maybe you're standing right next to him or maybe this dealer, the base dealer could hear and nobody else could because you mumbled. Right? So the dealer, whichever dealer could hear you, yells out very loudly, $5.12, that's a bet. And then say three rolls and the player goes, that was a horn high 12. Sorry, if the dealer yelled out $5.12, that's a bet and you didn't say a word, then you bet a $5.12, period. If the dice are already moving and you throw a chip out and you kind of mumble and the dealer goes $5.12 is a bet and you go, no, 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 that's a, that's a, chances are we're just gonna go, no bet this roll, no bet this roll, no action. Because the dice are already out and we're not gonna listen to the hemming and hawing and waiting until the dice land. So we're just gonna say no bet. Now, if you throw a chip out and the dealer doesn't say anything but just nods to acknowledge your bet, nobody else heard it, then there's a chance for a shot to be taken. But again, now, the player that does it is known as a shot taker. And every single dealer in every single box will know who that player is. And if they're regular, we'll know forever. I can definitely, I definitely know of, of dozens of shot takers that if they're on the table, every single bet that they make is, is screamed out loud by at least two dealers in a box every single time. Um, and once they get the reputation, once they get known as a shot taker, basically they let it slide once. After that, it will not slide again. Um, so they, you get that $12 come bet that's actually a six according to the player. That's only going to happen once. After that, nope, not going to fly. Um, they will only allow someone to take a shot one time and one time only. Now, uh, what about a jackpot? What is a jackpot? Well, a jackpot is a situation where the casino ends up taking a loss or the table ends up taking a loss or ends up in a position where it could potentially take a loss because of dealer error. 
because of dealer error. Now, sometimes that dealer error, like it, like let's say this, someone throws in, throws in a quarter, and they say horn high twelve, and the dealer just nods, doesn't book the bet, doesn't say anything. A twelve rolls, and now the player says, "No, that was a twenty-five dollar twelve. That's a borderline jackpot because it's both a shot and a jackpot because the dealer did not do their job in acknowledging and very loudly booking the bet. Okay. Oh, by the way, that's another chance to shot. By the way, horn high twelve. And if the and you know, dealer says twenty five dollar horn high twelve is a bet, and then say an eight rolls, and they go, "Where's my change? That was a five dollar horn high twelve. That would be a shot." So jackpots are can both be a shot and a jackpot, but jackpots are generally dealer errors. Now sometimes that error is just in not doing proper procedures, such as following a uh, such as booking the bets loudly, or even something like this, where someone bets a twenty five dollar twelve say a nine rolls or something, and the dealer forgets to take this down. Then the very next roll is a 12, and the dealer's like, oh, yeah, that came down last roll. And the player's like, ah, oh, and starts this big fuss. That's a jackpot. They'd have to go back to the cameras and, and figure it out. In the case of a $25 one, they probably will. Um, another one, a very common jackpot that I see, is when the point is mismarked. Maybe one side has the point as a six, and the other side has the point as an eight, and no dealers notice it. It's actually the stick person's responsibility to notice that, but maybe they missed it. It happens once. Once you really get in the flow of things, you kind of stop stop paying attention, especially if you trust the dealers. But you hear the wrong thing sometimes very loud. Um, so you got a mismarked point. Let's say you've got one side has a six mark, one side has an eight marked, and then a six rolls. Well, one side wants to pay, one side wants to pay the place bets, one side wants to pay the line. Now you've got an issue. Even worse, what if there's some don't players and a six roll? So all the don't pass players lose all their money if the six is the point. But if the eight is the point, then they haven't lost their money yet. What oftentimes ends up happening there is that we have to call the cameras and reset it up or they end up pushing everybody. They end up paying winners and not taking losers until they get it solved. That's a jackpot. So I hope you guys find this interesting, illuminating, enlightening, or just plain fun. We will catch you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Bye now. Okay guys, so as I promised at the end of the videos, I'm going to talk a little bit more about the live stream and how it's gonna work. So. The first thing is if you're interested in being one of the players for our craps tournaments, um, which is we're going to have every single week, um, please email us at sincitylivinglv at gmail.com. I need the email addresses so and know, want to know who is interested so that we can get it set up and we can select it. I'm going to have the first round is going to be 16 players. There will be four players per week. The fifth week is going to be the four champions from the previous weeks to get an ultimate champion. I haven't decided yet what the prize will be. Maybe I'll see if I can pick up another one of these lights. And, but we'll have some sort of prize for our, uh, um, for our champion. Um, so please, if you're interested, email us. I, I want to pick the first eight players, the first two weeks worth of players, so that uh, we'll have the first four ready for the first week. And the other four will be kind of backup, just in case somebody has connection issues or something comes up and they're not able to play that week, then I've got the other players on standby so I can just bump one of them up or maybe shift the first person down or something, something along those lines. Um, the main tournament is going to be Thursdays at 6 o'clock, uh, my time, Las Vegas time, 6 p.m. Las Vegas time. And it's, uh, the way it's going to work is it's going to be a time thing. I'm going to do the live stream for an hour. I'm going to do the game for an hour, rather. And uh, it might work out to about 30 rolls, might work out to about 40 rolls. I'm not too sure. We'll see how it goes. But it's going to be time. It's going to be an hour. Instead of uh, the craps tournaments that they do down on the strip where it's 30 rolls, we're going to do an hour. So I want to make sure I have a finite time limit for this to start with. And then we will go from there. I'm going to find a way, either a Discord or a Zoom or a private chat room, some way for the players to be logged into something where I can communicate with them on my second computer so that they can tell me what their bets are, what they want to bet, what they want to press when something hits without me having to scroll through the full chat of the live stream itself. I'm not going to be able to keep an eye on that. And if we have enough people watching and chatting, it could be difficult to keep an eye. So I have to figure that part out. Another reason I need the emails so I can communicate back and forth with the potential players. So if you're interested, again, please email me. Um, eventually, just pretty much everybody's going to have an opportunity 
to be in on these things because we're going to do multiple ones. I'm also looking at probably doing a second uh, craps tournament, maybe late Wednesday nights, um, possibly, I'm not sure, where I'm going to do it a little bit different. The second one is going to be instead of one hour and then whoever's got the most chips is the winner. Because those craps tournaments tend to have really weird strategies. They're not normal strategies, strategies that you'd see in normal play because you're competing against other players and you, you just want to make sure you have more chips than them by the end. What I'm going to do with the second tournament is instead of a weekly winner, we're going to play for an hour and then I'll keep track of how much uh, money people still have on their, or how many chips they still have. And then the next week, same players are going to keep going. Basically, this, this game will go until the bankrolls end, until we have one person with money left um, or chips left. Again, there's no money involved in this. So um, once, uh, um, once we have one final winner, so people will drop out as their, as their uh, play money bankrolls expire, as they, as they run, out of, uh, run out of chips. Um, so that one, I'm guessing, we'll see some more normal strategies, the kind of things people actually play when they're, when they're actually playing craps. And then eventually we're going to add uh, Baccarat, Pi Gao, um, Three Card Poker, um, Blackjack, of course, to, uh, to these tournaments. Whatever we can to these live streams and live stream tournaments. Whatever we can, when we can, as best we can. We're going to have to figure it out as we go. We have a lot of time constraints between me working full time plus a child. Um, but we're going to do the best we can. We're, we're very, very excited to, to uh, have this going. And we also will try and pick a day or time where I can do a patron exclusive tournament or two. We'll see. We'll see how many, uh, how many of our patrons are interested. And, uh, and see if we can't get that going as well where it's, where it's only on the patron site. Um, so definitely stay tuned, guys. Please, if you're interested in playing in one of the... Uh, one of the tournaments we're partaking in, in our live streams, aside from just the chat, obviously it's a live stream, please watch, chat with us, let us know how it's going or what you think. And uh, um, otherwise, please, again, email us, sincitylivinglv at gmail.com. Otherwise, I hope you guys are enjoying the videos. Any suggestions, please hit us up. Thank you guys very, very much. We appreciate every single one of you guys, and we will catch you guys next time. Bye now.